in Chapter 5 of the Pokemon Creepypasta, Weeping Cubone. The young woman stared at the Game Boy, shuddering as she remembered how Keith had slowly become insane and eventually died from playing the game in front of her. Swallowing nervously, she slowly took it and turned it on. The screen flickered rapidly between the regular startup text and a ghastly image of Keith slumped over his desk, an expression of horror froze into his face. Valerie covered her mouth as she looked away, tears swelling up in her eyes. What's the matter? The hypno asked with a sick grin. Nothing. Valerie croaked as she wiped her eyes. The game started from Keith's last save state. He had covered the entire map, although he was a few Pokemon short of catching all 151. Only Mew, Gengar, and one other remained. It was unclear what the third one was. The text for it was a jumble of glitches, but Valerie had a hunch who it was. Now, I, I want, want you to, to find the Gengar the young fool failed to catch. Once you catch it, I can release it into this world to aid me in my cause. Valerie gazed at the game, trying hard not to give away her excitement. Alright, I'll find it. She obeyed. Splendid. Hypno murmured as he leaned Alice up against a thick tree trunk. For some time, Valerie searched through the game with no luck. Her captor began to grow impatient, eventually asking, Why such a long wait for one small request? I'm having trouble, but don't worry, I'll find that Gengar, Valerie answered confidently as she looked up, seeing the moon peeking over the edge of the horizon. A spark of frustration was evident on the Hypno's stern face, saying, I grow tired of this long wait. You have until the moon reaches its zenith. If you don't find Gengar by then, well, I'm afraid Alice won't be waking up again. And neither will you. And also... With the snap of the Hypno's fingers, the murderous Cubone appeared. I'll put my little friend here to use again. The Cubone did not move, standing loyally by the much taller Hypno. Valerie's heart raced as time ticked by ever so slowly. She looked hard in the one area she had not searched, the cave by Indigo Plateau. She highly doubted she would find a Gengar there, but it was her only chance left. With the moon slowly rising, the young woman covered the entire floor of the cave. She gasped as her character froze, and a shadowy figure approached. A text box appeared that read, there you are. The figure approached as Hypno asked, Something wrong? Valerie shook her head, saying, I think I found it. Excellent. The figure came out from the darkness, revealing itself as a Marowak. Another text box read, I've been looking all over for you. My son has been taken into your world. I beg of you to allow me into your world as well, so I may take him back. Press A to accept. Press B to decline. With the burst of excitement, Valerie mashed the thumb down onto the A button, and the screen turned white. A beam of light appeared from the Game Boy. It was so overwhelming, Valerie had to avert her eyes. Yes, that's it. The hypno said, his lips spreading into a wide grin. The Marowak appeared before them as the light slowly died away. What? You let out the wrong one, you fool! The Marowak's eyes narrowed as it turned to face the shocked Hypno and its possessed son. So, so it was you, wicked Hypno. You stole my son, son, and now you must pay. pay. As the enraged mother approached, the Hypno backed away, starting, Please, listen, it's not as it seems. Bumping into a tree, the Hypno hesitated for a moment, then raised its pendant to attack. The swift Marowak rushed forward as it hurled its bone club, which shattered the pendant before returning to its owner. No! My power! My spells! As the Hypno fell to the ground, desperately trying to piece its destroyed pendant back together, it failed to see the furious Marowak approaching quickly. The mother gave the Hypno a vicious headbutt, smashing his body against the tree so forcefully it splintered the wood. With a groan of defeat, the Hypno collapsed by its broken pendant. The Cubone seemed to suddenly snap out of a deep trance. Where am I? Mother? Mother? Son! 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 The two reunited in an affectionate embrace and approached Valerie. 
Thank you for returning my son to me. There is only one thing left for us to disappear from this world forever. The Marowak took the Game Boy and smashed it with her large bone club. The final copy of Pokemon Dark version finally reduced to rubble. Another beam of light appeared as the moon reached its zenith at last, the three Pokemon slowly being pulled into the beam. Bowery shielded her eyes to watch in awe as they slowly began to disappear. The Marowak and Cubone waved goodbye with grateful smiles. Fools, I will return for you. Hypno warned Valerie before disappearing into the light. With the massive flash, only the game's remains were left behind. Valerie found herself in her room at home. Overwhelmed with joy, she let out a wild scream. It was though she had never been banished to the mental hospital. She gasped as she heard a knock on her door, and her mother came in, concerned. Are you all right, Val? I heard a shriek. Valerie hurried over to her mother and hugged her tightly. You're acting quite strange tonight. Are you okay? Just fine, Valerie answered with a big smile. And that is the story of the Weeping Cubone Creepypasta. Ted, Keith, and Erica may have passed away, but Valerie remains as the sole survivor with no chance of the evil Hypno ever returning. <laughs>